always refreshing when we go to the throne room of God. Amen? So now I'm excited. We're now in verse 31 of Romans 8. Verse 31. So what does this all mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, who then could ever stand against us? For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, that's Jesus, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. Who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued his final verdict over them and it's not guilty. So it's a tying up that when we began Romans 8, it said, case closed. And here he is reiterating it, the one who wrote um, Romans, which is Paul, that you're not guilty. Every time you come to God and you confess your sin, openly the verdict is not guilty that really should encourage us who then is left to condemn us certainly not jesus the anointed one for he gave his life for us and even more than that he has conquered death and is now risen exalted and enthroned by god at his right hand so how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph. Wow! Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. So why will he condemn us? You know, I, I remember when one of the prayer meetings I do at home, you know, when I'm, I just let the Holy Spirit lead me. And I was going through some tough times, like people, you know, misunderstood me, betrayed me, talked against me. And I said, God, how do you want me to react to this? I know how to react in the flesh. You know how to react in the flesh. But I said, Holy Spirit, how should I react as a Christian? And you know what the Lord said, and maybe this will help you. He said, bridge them prophetically back to me by praying for them that their relationship with God will cause them to do what is right in the eyes of God and I'm telling you it works our prayers should not be like oh look at them Lord you know they're doing this and you should kill them no our prayer is God by your mercies we just bridge them back to you because when you're not right with other people, you're not right with God. No? So what we want is that their relationship with God will be reestablished through our prayers, through prophetic prayers where you are decreeing what could be, what should be, instead of rehearsing what they did to you. That's a great tip for all the intercessors and prayer warriors then we won't lose as many soldiers as we do right do you think that makes sense you know my prayer life changed when the holy spirit showed me that so verse 34 who then is left to condemn us certainly not jesus the anointed one and again i'm repeating so how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph. Verse 35. Who could ever divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. You know, park there a little bit. Nothing can diminish the power of his love toward us not your gravest sin not any person in power nor any principality his love 
is the greatest weapon of warfare. So, are troubles going to separate you? Pressures and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, dangers, and death threats? No, for they are all impotent to hinder omnipotent love. Wow. Even though it is written about us, all day long we face death threats from for your sake, God. We are considered to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Being a Christian is not it always fun. You know how in tourism it's described it's always fun in the Philippines. That's the problem in the Philippines. We make fun of everything. We cannot distinguish what is serious from what is mundane. And it's the Holy Spirit who will train your spiritual senses to understand what is serious and what is not. So we make fun of our president, we make fun of our wives, we make fun of each other, not knowing that death and life lies in the power of our tongues. So we curse ourselves without us knowing it. We, we set up negativity over people's lives, although we're always in prayer. That's why with the Holy Spirit, He bridges us from the natural to the supernatural. You know how diba? it's like we always want an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Somebody slaps you one day, I'll slap you too. But you know there's power in forgiveness. There's power in unconditional love. That's why the omnipotent love of God cannot be matched by hatred and violence and death. So as Christians, if you learn to walk with God by the leading of the Holy Spirit, He is the third person in the Trinity. Remember, He's a part of God. He is God. If you are walking with the Holy Spirit, you will see things from a different perspective. You know how it is in the world, if you're the head, you you know you throw your weight around everybody should do what i want but jesus served he's called the kingdom the a servant leader of the kingdom how did he serve he poured out his life for sinners like you and me he gives us unconditional love until everything else is melted your rebellion your hatred your violence once you experience that kind of love it melts these things and it will cause to have a new order in the world the kingdom order of god why do people separate why do people divorce because they have ceased they stopped they said I don't have anything more to give you. But if you are constantly filled by the Holy Spirit and the love of God, it's easier to forgive. Especially if you know that because we are in a spiritual warfare, you won't win if you don't forgive. Did you realize that? We think we win by holding it against people all our lives. We all lose. We lose the people we love. We lose relationships just because we're not willing to be like Christ. So why did I park in Romans 8? Because this is a transitioning from a sinner to a saint. How if before we were run by offense, by all our trauma, because we confess it to God and we ask God as healer, deliverer, savior, and we confess all all of our sins let's call it what it is sins the verdict is case closed and again it's repeated before we end this chapter next week it's not guilty why would we not repent if the ending is not guilty so if we are going to win we're called soldiers. We're called the bride of Christ. 
we're called many things, but we are the bride and we are called to fight the good fight of faith. It's warrior bride. That's the church. We fight because we love, but not in the arena of the physical, where we would kill people and hold guns on their heads. This is love them, forgive them. You know, he will bring solutions for relationships that are complex. So that's the kind of life that will bring change in the world, in the workplace. You're salt, you are light, you are a preservative. You are the one that can bring forth vision because there's light. You can't, when you can't see, there's no vision, right? So because you are led by the Holy Spirit and he brings you to the light, who is Jesus, then he is the way, the truth, and the life. So you will have more abundance. You will know how to, you know, muddle through the very painful things you may have experienced in life. God can turn it around. He can. No matter if you're a murderer, well, a murderer is the one who wrote the Gospels. He, he killed a lot of Christians, Saul, and now he became Paul. He wrote Romans 8. So, let us begin to really ask the Holy Spirit, can you train my spiritual senses? So that I will have the understanding of God's mind, God's thoughts, God's ways. Because our way, oh, it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But the last thing Jesus said on that cross was, Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. I wonder how many divorces would not go through if we apply that. But God's love will never divorce us because it's omnipotent. It's powerful. And once we've experienced it, you will never be the same again. And so that's the journey we take from a sinner to a saint, from guilty to case closed. That's when you can affect the next generation you know we can talk and talk but it's really what we do that they'll follow right even at home even if we yak yak on the kids but they see us do opposite they'll follow what you do so that's why the bible i'm so glad it says there is a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it and that's the holy spirit so we this is revival night and who revives us the Holy Spirit. So I invite you again to really make him a part of your daily life, of your relationships, of your job, so that you will experience what it is like to live out of the overflow of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So my prayer is that you will apply what you learn here. You, The only thing, actually, if you sum it up, is Holy Spirit help me Holy Spirit show me you inquire of the Holy Spirit because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit right so once again I pray that this whole we took a lot of time here in Romans 8 I pray that you will really bring it to God to the Holy Spirit. You know, you can watch the replay from Romans 1 up to, I mean from Romans 8 verse 1 up to today. And then next week, we're going to wrap it up. God bless you. Hey, stay revived. See you next Tuesday. <music>